Okay, so that's Kruskal's algorithm. Uh, go through all the edges in ascending order and say, hey, I'm going to add this edge to my forest uh, if it doesn't create a cycle. Okay, so great. Uh, what's the running time? Well, I go through all the edges. Okay, um, so one step of the loop per edge. How long does each uh, code inside the loop take? Uh, we go ahead and basically we have to ask, hey, are the two edges in the same set or not, uh, in the same tree? If so, then the adding them would form a loop. And that's where we're going to capitalize on this previous uh, clever implementation uh, of disjoint sets, uh, the union find algorithm um, that we saw basically could do union and find in essentially linear, or sorry, constant time, essentially constant time, uh, log star, which for all intents and purposes is about seven or something like that, depending on the base of your log. Okay, so yeah, inside the loop is essentially constant time, log star, um, and the outer loop is the number of edges, call that M, it's a common notation for a graph, N is the number of nodes, M is the number of edges. So we're basically big theta of M. I mean, it's really M log star of M, but um, uh, M log star of N, yeah. Uh, okay, so great. If uh, we're happy with that, if N is, I mean, by, by the way, what's the bound on the number of edges? Uh, M. Uh, well, n squared. Can't have more than n squared edges in a graph. And so if n is small enough that n squared is not so bad, yeah, we're happy. Um, or if we have a graph where maybe we, n is really huge, like you know, 10 million, 100 million, a billion, uh, but every node only has a few neighbors, well, then, then we're okay with that too. If every node only has two or three neighbors, neighbors on average, there's not a whole lot of edges, and we're fine. If we have a big N and every neighbor, every node has about N neighbors or N halves neighbors or something like that, uh, yeah, then we're approaching N squared behavior, which for a large, large, large N is not fun. So, okay, so that's Kruskal algorithm and its running time. Now let's look at its correctness. Um, I claimed before and I, I still claim its correctness is not obvious. A lot of people. Uh, in, especially in computer science, if you don't have a practice in writing down proofs, you look at the algorithm and say, yeah, yeah, clearly that's right. But let me just sort of step back. I mean, we're doing this very greedy algorithm looking at any moment saying, hey, what, what can I, if I add this, will it cause a cycle? And we keep doing that. And then I claim, hey, this is the smallest way any spanning tree could be created. And that's not obvious to me um, at first blush. So. Um, so let's go through and maybe argue that. And I have a whole little wall of text here that we'll go through. Um, by the way, uh, so we, our algorithm had this minimum spanning tree so far, this forest that we were building up, the set of edges that we were building up and adding to. Um, I'm not going to argue that that actually, when we finish that as a tree or that uh, it is a spanning tree, I think to be correct, you can try to go officially argue both of those, and it's, those are both pretty straightforward. Um, now, but assuming that it is a, a, we do end up with a spanning tree, uh, let's look that we really get a minimum spanning tree. Okay, um, so what I want to do is I want to look at the uh, proof by contradiction. Assume not. Assume you run the algorithm and didn't get a minimum spanning tree. And I want to say, hey, what's the first point at which we went wrong? The first edge E that we tried to add that isn't, I don't want to say isn't in the resulting spanning tree because, minimum spanning tree, because there can be more than one minimum spanning tree. There can be several spanning trees all tied for the minimum. And just because I add an edge that isn't what you think is in a particular spanning tree doesn't mean I've gone wrong. So here's all a phrase. I went wrong. Uh, if I add an edge so I can no longer take my set of edges and extend it to some minimum spanning tree. As long as the set of edges I have is part of some minimum spanning tree, I haven't gone wrong yet. Okay. Um, so look at the first edge E that we added so that uh, MST so far was no longer part of some minimum spanning tree. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to freeze time and look at that snapshot of the algorithm. 
um, okay, we'll take some full spanning tree T, take one that does include all the edges of MST so far, right before I added E. Remembering this, we're saying I froze it right at the moment we went wrong, so right before I added E, all the edges I had were part of some minimum spanning tree, okay? In fact, even at the very initial set, I started with the empty set, so I'm like, clearly the empty set is can be extended into some minimum spanning tree. So yeah. Um, okay, so I was correct for a while, and then I tried to add this bad edge E. Okay, uh, look at <clears throat> some T, some real minimum spanning tree that uh, you saw at the end of the algorithm. Here's a minimum spanning tree, um, and you didn't get one. You didn't get a minimum spanning. Not E. Well, look at T plus E. Now, when you have a tree and you add one edge to it, we saw before that gives you a cycle. And removing any one edge from that cycle will give you back a tree. Okay? So we have T plus E um, that has a cycle in it. Okay. Um, by the way, call that cycle, I called it C here in this text. Um, some of the edges of that cycle weren't in MST so far, back in my algorithm, okay? Uh, if all the edges were, there were some, there are edges that aren't E and aren't all in that cycle. Uh, if they were, my algorithm wouldn't have tried to make MST so far plus E because I, our algorithm will never produce a cycle. That's part of the previous statement. Our algorithm really does produce a tree. Um, so, okay, so yeah, uh, if you look at this T plus E, it has a cycle. That cycle includes some edge, some edges that weren't in MST so far. Look at the heaviest of those, okay? Um, and now I'm gonna sort of say that, hey, call that new, that heaviest node in that cycle that's not E, it's not, was not in MST so far. Um, I'm gonna argue that it can't be heavier than E and it can't be as heavy as E, and it can't be lighter than E. And that's our contradiction, okay? F can't be heavier than E, why? Because if I take T plus E that had the cycle, and remove F, I added, so I took T, I added E, removed F, I've made the weight smaller, and I still have, an, I have another minimum spanning tree that was different than T. T couldn't have been a minimum spanning tree. Okay, so that would be a contradiction. Um, okay, uh, how about T? E and F being equally heavy, okay? Uh, that can't happen for a slightly different reason. Uh, we said that um, uh, there's no minimum spanning tree that contains uh, all the edges before we added E. Uh, T plus E with removed F uh, would be a minimum spanning tree that contain all the images, images of uh, all the edges of MST so far, and E, and we said there wasn't such any such minimum spanning tree. Okay, so E and F can't be equally heavy. So now, F can't be lighter than E. Uh, why not? If F were lighter than E, now here for the first time we're going to go and refer back to our algorithm. If F were lighter than E, our algorithm would have already looked at F, and if it didn't introduce a cycle, or put it this way, we already looked at F, we didn't include it, uh, and the reason our algorithm didn't include it must mean that it introduced a cycle, and if it introduces a cycle, you know, this graph T that contains F uh, would have a cycle as well, and that wouldn't be a tree. So, yeah, we, there can't be such a cycle. There can't be such a tree. Uh, there can't be some E that we added at some point that gave us something that was not part of a bigger sp minimum spanning tree. So our algorithm is correct. That's a lot to chew through. Go through, look closely, read it closely in those, those posted notes. So, okay, uh, that's just good practice as a computer scientist to think about correctness. It's something that undergraduates uh, often don't have much experience with at all. Um, usually we teach things and we say, here's an algorithm, and yeah, sure, it feels correct, yeah, and we ran it and it seems to give the right answers. Yeah, that, that's fine. A proof of correctness is more and more important as the algorithms get more and more clever. Okay, um, great, uh, let me just wrap up. Should I do this in a separate video or should I do it here? I'll go ahead and do it in a separate video. You've had enough time, you, need to, you deserve a little break.